Welcome back to Pentagram Prime, everyone. Continuing our savage journey into the heart of the complex plane, we'll be looking at what happens when you calculate the residue of f of z at z0 versus what happens when you calculate the residue of the square of f of z at z0. We aim to show that the residue of f of z squared at z0 is not necessarily the square of the residue of f of z at z0. We'll be doing this by example, and while the exercise only asks us to do this once, I thought it would be fun to do it with two different functions. So our first example is going to be f of z equal to 1 over e to the z minus 1 for a residue located at z naught equal to 0. We already calculated this residue in part b of the previous episode, so I'm not going to go into detail here on the process of obtaining it. We know that it's equal to 1, so we'll move on to the square of f of z. We will begin by separating the square of f of z into two functions, g of z for the numerator and h of z for the denominator. We see that g of z is a constant equal to 1. Then we take some derivatives of h of z, and after evaluating them at z0, we see that the lowest order derivative with a non-zero value is that of h, double prime, which equals 2. With the values of h of 0, h prime of 0, and h double prime of 0 having established that the denominator in f of z squared contains a second order 0 at z0, we now need to find a proper method for evaluating the residue. Proposition 414 on page 247, also used in part b of the previous episode, requires the following. Functions g and h must be analytic at z0. g of z0 must be non-zero. h prime of z0 must be zero. And h double prime of z0 must be non-zero. You are on the way for this version. The shoe fits, so we use the indicated formula on page 247 and enter in the values for the functions g and h along with their derivatives. This gives us negative 1 for the residue of f of z squared at z0. Negative 1 is not the square of the residue of f of z at z0, which is equal to 1. Thus, we have shown here that for a given residue of f of z at z0, the residue of the square of f of z at z0 need not be the square of the original residue. Our next example will be f of z equals z plus 2 divided by c squared minus 2z for a residue located at z0 equal to 0. Like the previous functions, we already calculated this residue in the previous episode, specifically part c. So we'll skip the details. We know that it's equal to negative 1, so we can move on to dealing with the square of the function. As with the first example, we will separate f of z squared into g of z for the numerator and h of z for the denominator. g and h are both analytic at z0, and in calculating their first three derivatives evaluated at z0, we see that the results match the same requirements for the aforementioned Proposition 414. The formula in Proposition 414 produces a value of 2 for the residue of the square of f of z at z0, which is not negative 1. This again shows that for a given residue of f of z at z0, the residue of the square of f of z at z0 need not be the square of the original residue. The answer in the back of Marsden and Hoffman used f of z equals 1 over z. I thought about working that example following the other two functions, but it seemed kind of blah, I don't know. I can see why they used it in the book. It is a good example, but for whatever reason, it's not where my head was at when I was working the problem. If someone out there needs me to throw it up on the screen, then maybe I'll do a video about it. Till next time, this is Pentagram Prime signing off.